everyone, we're just going to give um, a few more attendees a couple more minutes before we start. All right, thank you everyone for coming to today's webinar on how to enable subscribers during our next normal. Uh, in this webinar, we're going to be discussing working learning and doing pretty much everything from home. Um, if you are unfamiliar with who I am, I am Danny. I am the ComTrend sales representative, um, more than likely assisting you. I probably already have had some contact with you. If not, uh, you were probably invited by Jim Fuller, who is the account manager over at Goldfield. Uh, we do work closely together. So if you were to have any questions after this webinar, uh, you are more than welcome to contact me or Jim. I will provide both of our contact information at the very end. Also, please stick to the very end because we will be announcing the winners to the Apple AirPod contest. Now, to get on with the uh, webinar itself, we did a couple of uh, short research or a little bit of a re research. And if you're unfamiliar who Open Vault is, um, they're an LLC that provides a network management, policy and control, data integration, and pretty much business analytics software as a service. It's designed to help communication providers or CSPs to achieve the revenue and operational goals. So I bring them up because they did a study of broadband utilization since COVID had hit, which is up on your screen. You can read the article on your own after the presentation if you like, but I'm going to break it down for you right now. If, as we're all aware, uh, COVID drove the average broadband subscriber to use more internet than normal, especially with the implication of stay at home orders. The study they conducted show an average of broadband subscribers utilize a monthly average of 400 gigabytes of data by the end of this last March. And that figure was about 50% greater than a year ago or the year ago quarter, and April showed signs of surpassing that total. This article was from early May, so if the trend from quarter one 2020 was almost 50% more than quarter one 2019, we can only assume that quarter two and quarter three are going to follow suit and surpass those numbers. And early this year, OpenVault had projected that power users and extreme power users, which they describe as power users to use a terabyte or more and extreme power users to use two terabytes or more, would represent 12% and 1.4% of, of all subscribers by the end of 2020. So you're probably asking, why is this so important? 
And the reason it's important is because the pandemic changed the broadband usage of patterns in substantial ways. And this could be even permanently. Internet providers will be able, uh, internet providers will need to understand the implications of shifting usage behavior and plan the network performance capabilities accordingly. So our behavior shifted as the virus spread and pushed us to our devices for work, play and connecting. So we're looking for ways to entertain ourselves by utilizing streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. And we're trying to connect with each other using social media outlets like Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. Not to mention the increase of stay-at-home workspaces and kids learning from home, which created the need for video call applications such as Zoom, House Party, and Skype. So in the last few years, users of these services like Netflix, Hulu, and Facebook were moving to their smartphones, creating a large focus on LTE and mobile internet. People were taking advantage of those unlimited data plans and really didn't see the need for, need for a Wi-Fi connection at home. Now that we're spending all of our time at home with computers close at hand, we seem to be remembering how unpleasant it can be to squint at these little tiny phone screens. And I'm pretty sure we all remember the surge of installations our ISPs were performing back in April when the realization that we couldn't do everything with just a mobile hotspot set in, especially when it came to the amount of streaming we started doing. So how can we enable subscribers? Well, for one, we can improve the customer's Wi-Fi performance and improve their overall experience. Secondly, we can support those who are working and learning from home by offering voice over IP phones using a power over ethernet power line adapter. We can then give these subscribers the tools to control and monitor the children at home's internet usage with the help of parental controls. So let's start with solution number one, which is improving the customer's Wi-Fi performance and improving their overall experience. Instead of boosting the speed with individual devices like Wi-Fi, instead of boosting the speed for individual devices, Wi-Fi 6 is all about improving the network when a bunch of these devices are connected. So Wi-Fi 6 can handle more devices at once and will be able to keep the speed and latency more consistent even under a very heavy load. So when these wi so when Wi-Fi 5 came out, the average US household only had about five Wi-Fi devices connected to it. Now in homes, we have nine or more. Wi-Fi devices on average, and it's predicted will hit 50 on average within the next few years, especially with the increase of smart home devices. Another new technology in Wi-Fi 6 allows devices to plan out communications with the router, reducing the amount of time they need to keep their antennas powered on to transmit and search for signals. This means less strain on batteries and improved battery life. This is all possible because of a feature called target wake-up time which lets routers schedule check-in times with devices. Even if you as an ISP does not currently offer Wi-Fi 6, I highly suggest you still utilize Wi-Fi 6 routers and gateways. Since most people keep the routers for years and may upgrade their phones or computers multiple times, before they even get a new router, it's best to get a router that's ready for the future. Our two readily available Wi-Fi devices are the PRT6301, which is a five gigabit ethernet router, has one watt of ultra high power Wi-Fi 6 and sits at AX5400. The other is the VR3071 modem, which is our fastest VDSL option out. The same one watt ultra high power and also sits at AX5400. We'll have a bonded solution coming very soon. This will be the PBL6201, uh, which you see on your screen, and we'll have the same one watt of ultra power, but we'll be at AS6000. If you think you could be interested in one of these devices but are worried about truck rollouts and risking the technician's health, we can create self-installation guides to help keep your technicians, employees, and the customers safe. Now we're going to start going through our Wi-Fi Extend 2.0 family, aka we're, we're going to be talking about G.HM power line adapters and other Wi-Fi extenders. So as a quick rundown on what Wi-Fi Extend 2.0 is, it's our mesh enhancement system that uses technology such as adaptive roaming and self-healing to provide enhanced subscriber experience. Each device works together to reach remote locations of your home or whatever building you're utilizing it in. And all of our devices do include TR069, which will support uh, remote setup, manage uh, and troubleshoot and control the extenders remotely. So this is our PG9172AC, which is our wireless AC desktop unit. Uh, using this in conjunction with our PG9172PT, 
The, this adapter will provide a strong extended Wi-Fi connections to locations such as uh, a remote garage, which is what I'm kind of showing you here. So the power line network will require two or more power line adapters. One adapter will be connected to the router as shown, and the other adapters are placed where you need to either expand the Ethernet connectivity, extend wireless coverage, or deliver data connectivity and power. Now, the PG9182AC solves dead wireless zones and hard to reach areas that are utilizing the building's existing electrical wiring. Along the same lines, this is the Wave 2 technology, allowing it to reach up to 2,000 megabits per second by rates over the power line connection and up to 500 megabits per second through a single Ethernet port. This is a plug in version versus a desktop version. G.HN Wave 2 power line adapters can often pair faster by plugging it in with. RPG9182PT into an outlet and then plugging in in the second wave two adapter into the pass through outlet. Connect, you can connect up to 16 uh, of these units per network. The kits are sold separately. I do have to mention that part. Again, this is just a quick rundown of the application of our G.HN units. A power line network, like I mentioned, does work with two or more power line adapters. This is more or less exactly as the last example used for the PG9172AC, which stands at the fire rate of, two, of 1,200 megabits per second. But this application just shows an example of our 9182AC, which again stands at a rate of 2,000 megabits per second, which will transmit data faster. Now, this is our newest wireless mesh extender, which is the WAP5903. This is also in part of our Wi-Fi Extend 2.0 family. And when the WAP5903 is paired with at least one other Wi-Fi Extend 2.0 device, it creates a powerful wall-to-wall -wall mesh Wi-Fi network. Again, this is just a quick example of how you would connect the gateway to our Wi-Fi mesh extender. And this is an overview of the products we just presented. Now, with these products, if this is something that you as an ISP are looking to get into, please note that I understand that you are trying to pre pretty much do um, stay safe, keep your technicians safe, your customers safe, and perform other ways to uh, social distance. So we can reduce time at the customer premise and maintain social distancing while sending self-installation guides via email. So meaning you can just drop this off at the customer's doorstep or mail it to them directly, and you would be able to be, you would be able to have them install it themselves and not have to have any truck rollouts, and that also saves time and money on your half. We're now at, we are now at our next solution, which is internet management and tools to control and monitor internet usage with the help of forensic controls as well. So we're going to talk about routes as an, IS, as an ISP that you can take to better assist your customers. So Comtrans ACS 3.0 solution is the next generation of a TR069 based service provider design solution. This update includes new customer requested features and functionality. Our ACS has an easy to use CSR GUI that can remotely solve customer issues and it'll also perform comprehensive speed tests and display connection rates between nodes. If you would like more information on this, please contact me or your distribution representative and we can set up a time and day to go into further detail as well as we can perform a live demonstration for you and your team. And our final bullet point was support those who are working and learning from home by offering voice over IP phones and using a PoE power line adapter. Comtrans PG9172 PoE is a G.HN power line device with the added benefit of power over Ethernet connectivity. Uh, using the existing electro wiring and power line technology, you can get data and power connectivity to hard to reach locations without expensive installation of Ethernet cables. This would include CAT5 and CAT6 cables. ISPs can choose to send this customer send these to the customer directly for self-installations, as I mentioned previously, to keep in line with social distancing guidelines. As usual, power, use, power line uses the, electri the electrical lines, reducing the need for long distance ethernet cables. And this is our newest Wave 2 PoE power line adapter. I wanted to point out that Wave 2 offers 
802.3 AF18, which wave one offers 802.3 AF, while wave two offers 30 watt of power, wave one gives 15 watts, and wave two is a two port gigabit ethernet device. So it's a much stronger device overall. Again, this is just showing how you can utilize our ether, uh, PoE devices to connect your voice over IP phones, especially right now. We don't want to drop any calls, especially if we're working from home. And these are the devices we just spoke up briefly. If you would like to screenshot anything at this point, you are able to. And now we are going to talk about how we can allow subscribers uh, greater control of their networks with forensic controls. Now, Comtran and Router Limits have a very strong partnership. So internet management software is, in, is around to pretty much managed service offering parental control of the network monitors. This kind of service will become increasingly important as distance learning continues, especially if you want to keep and keep your kids in line with making sure their learning time is learning time. And if you need to shut off their phones within a certain time, like it's dinner time or they're supposed to be learning, you can remote manage those devices. With parental controls, you can individual control device by group. You can filter their content, pause their internet access. You can set bedtimes and manage screen time as I men mentioned earlier. You can track their browsing activity and the best part of this as compared to other parental control devices, this will work away from the home and LTE. So say hypothetically speaking, they are not connected to the router. They are not connected to the actual device at home. With the router limits and Bark application, this device will allow them to the application itself will uh, prevent the phone from disconnecting from the actual limits themselves. So say if they turn off the Wi-Fi, sometimes they'll be able to connect to an, whatever website they were trying, they were previously blocked from. With router limits, if they turn off the Wi-Fi, they will still have that limit. Even if they use the LTE or if they connect to somebody else's Wi-Fi network, they will still have those limits put in place. It's not subject to just being at home. This will work anywhere that that device is at. Real-time monitoring of usage, the check engine light indicators, detailed usage by device, and aggregation over time will also be included in this. Now with router limits, we also have CAF testing. Uh, the speed testing will is directly from the hardware to the router limits cloud or a self-hosted test server. Uh, they do have on-demand or scheduled periodic testing to track historically over time. Uh, tests can be initiated remotely by the ISP. And I know that this is probably really important to a lot of you, but we router limits is CAF2 compliant. I know that a lot of you might need to have this ready by 2021. Some of you have been pushed out by 2022. But if this is something that you're looking to get into because we want to be able to be ready by 2021, please let me know or your distributor rep know and we can get you started. Now, what are our three key takeaways here? So one, we talked about the effects of COVID-19 and we, how it's mon modified customer usage trends, um, pretty much by increasing the use of video chats, gaming and online work, learning and working from home. Uh, two, service providers will need to be able to meet the increased demands being put into the home networks due to COVID-19. And three, we can provide subscribers with, in their next normal by upgrading to Wi-Fi 6, utilizing power line and Wi-Fi uh, wi extenders to eliminate dead zones, uh, utilizing power line and PoE to connect VoIP phones, and offering internet management to allow greater control over the network. Now, some of you might not have me as a representative. As you can see on your screen, we do have the representatives assisting in your area. Um, Jose and I do have very similar territory. So if I am your representative and you contact Jose, he will pass you on to me, so on and so forth. Um, and then we also have Paige and Steve who handle most of the East Coast accounts. Um, if you are unsure who your representative is, you are a, more than welcome to email any one of us and we will steer you in the correct direction.
And here is my contact information as well as Jim Fuller's information if you don't already have it. Feel free to screen cap this and save it. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to contact me with any questions or concerns you may have. Um, if anything, I know that right now you guys are more so those in Iowa are caught in a storm. Um, I really hope that you guys are safe right now. Um, but if you guys have anybody that would, would have been interested in this webinar but are unable to attend because of that storm, uh, please let them know that I will have this up on our YouTube channel within the next coming days. And I just want to thank everyone for showing up. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Um, and that means I also get to announce our Apple iPod winners. Uh, Tammy Wheeler from Molten, the Molten Iowa Farmers location, I will be sending you um, an email with pretty much all the information I'll need to be able to send you these Apple um, AirPods. Uh, but if you guys have any other questions, I think I am done for today. Uh, please, like I said, once this goes live on YouTube, please share this with anybody you think is interested. And I hope you took something away from this webinar.